Hello. Recently, it has been getting very popular to integrate uh, Modbus into PC systems using uh, C++. So uh, the engineers at Turk Banner Singapore has been working very hard to give you a, very, a simple demo program for you to test out um, the C++ application of Modbus. Okay, so now let me bring you to our setup. Okay, so uh, over here, over here, I have a T-Band S2 RFID with uh, basically which provide two ports for RFID usage, and and one of the ports I'm currently using port one in a RFID bus mode. Okay, in a high frequency bus mode, uh, as requested in one of our by our one of our customers. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to use the C++ code developed for the HF bus mode uh, using the C++ demo program. Okay. So now just open the. Uh, okay. So you firstly you need to have um, Visual Studio 2017. Yeah, I think 2015 also works. But yeah, and then uh, you can you need to integrate light mode bus into the whole into the programming environment okay so as you can see okay and then once uh, you have light mode bus into the programming environment you can act you can just download the code and then you can just run okay so now okay now this video will be mostly about will be mostly a tutorial just to walk you through how the capabilities of uh, the code lah, so you can test out the system and then adapt the code to your, your own usage afterwards okay so over here in this bus so it starts off with uh, questioning which channel have you connected to so I connect it to this channel 0 and channel 1 I connect it to the second one which is channel 1 so I'll input channel 1 inside then you'll go to a basic uh, interface okay asking you what options you want Okay, so, oh, thank you. Okay, so, okay, uh, so let me bring up. So, the first option is to bring the, uh, your read head to idle. Okay, so you can actually, so the different, the RFID read heads, right, uh, sorry, the channel has a different, uh, command modes that you need to, uh, execute in order to do certain functions such as the reading mode or the writing mode or the continuous continuous mode okay so now how do you check what is the mode that is currently in is you can go to the device url right for my device it is the ip address is over here this is the web server okay uh, for convenience you can just type in the password to get admin rights. The password is password by default. Okay. Then you can go to parameter. Make sure your channel is configured in this HF bus mode. And make sure you have activated the read heads that you're using. I have three read heads. Okay. So I activated three read heads. And you go to input and channel one. You have your uh, you will have your response code telling you what state it is in now. Okay, so if you just pay attention to this screen during the demo, you will see that the state will change according to some of the commands. Okay, so let me scroll down a bit more. Okay, yeah. So now the first, the second command is to this code allows you to detect. So I have a RFID HF RFID card here. And then the command 2 will allow you to detect which read head is it at now. So if you run it right now, it has no read head. If I put it at read head 1, it will tell you it's at read head 1. Now if I go all the way to the back, the one at the back, okay, it will tell you I'm at read head 3. So the reheads are numbered accordingly from the nearest to the furthest from the bus. Okay. 
So 1, 2, and 3. So if I go to read 2, and I run the command, 2 enter, and you'll be at read head 2. Okay? Okay, so now, how if you want to read, so all these uh, RFID card, HFRFD have a UID that's uh, immutable, cannot be changed. So, but and which helps you identify uh, which tag it belongs to. So, if you want to read that one, there's option 3. Okay? And it will detect what is the length of the UID. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and then, it will give you the UID over here. Okay? So, you can see this is my first card. If I change my card over here, okay? It's a different card, and I changed. And I run the code again. So you'll say that, see, you can see that this code over here is read differently from this code over here. Okay? So uh, one thing to note, okay, just now you saw from the video, I actually put it at read head 2. But why is this read head 3? That's because if you go back to the video, uh, I used the same tag. The same tag went to scan read head 3 first before going to read head 2. So if you change read head in between, right, it actually wouldn't reflect. Yeah, you wouldn't record the tag again, okay, if it's the same card. So uh, let me demo to you, okay. Let me refresh, okay. So if I put it at read head 2, okay. Okay, and I read 3. You'll notice that, okay, it's detected at read head 2. So now if I go to read head 3, it will still be at read head 2. I can go to 1 and it will still be we hit 2. You only you only change if I tap another card. Okay? And then I tap some and then I tap it back again, okay? So now it's first discovered at we hit 3. Okay? So uh, that's one of the quirks of uh the either mode detect the inventory mode lah. Uh or for detecting the UID. Of course, you can also detect uh, which tag is it present at, like uh, using functions that was used in uh, our option 2. Okay? Like, as you mentioned, as you have seen just now, I will use the same card at different head, and I use option 2, and it always reflects where it is. Okay? So now, uh, fourth option. Reading user data. Okay, I'll just use anyone. Okay, so uh, okay, so if you have some other other data you want to write into the R RFID tag, right? The text usually the tag itself usually come with some level of uh user data that you can manipulate. So over here, okay, and if you want to read that one, you can just press use option four. And right now, I saved all my data in a long string, uh, like this. Okay. Uh, it's at read head 2. And then, okay. So, uh, that's a sample of the read head, eh, of reading user data. You can also, let me read another card. Okay. Ah, and then you can see, eh, I changed the card and it's a different data. You see with the smiley face over here. So now if you don't want to so you, if you don't like this user data, right, you want to write your own, you can use option 5. But in order to write whatever you want, right, uh, it's actually hard-coded into the code uh, for the sake of uh, fast development. So if you want to change your own thing, come over to the main. You go to the C++ code, go to the, to the main, right, there's this, uh, there's this variable over here that allows you to change it into whatever information that you want. Okay, and then, and then count it, how how many, make sure the array is of the correct length, okay, and adjust, and then adjust the, this variable, okay, because right now it's 22, I'm using 22, array of 22, and I'll just put 22 into the length itself, okay. Okay, and then, yeah. So if after that, for example, let me change this to uh, 7, okay? And then I save, and then, okay, I'll end the code using 0, and I'll run the code again. 
Okay, it's connected to channel one. Let me write the data in. Okay, if not, yeah, if nothing goes wrong, right? Right. If there's no other prompts, it doesn't get stuck. And then you see that in the state, right? It doesn't say it's busy. It's not busy writing, right? Okay, that means it, has, it was a successful write. And then we can check again with option four. And you can see that my data has changed to seven. Okay. Yeah. And over here, although it's uh, over here, there's only 18 characters. That's because uh, character zeros, right? These zeros actually don't have a, don't have an associated char. So let's just say if I want to change the number, okay? Yeah, I want to change whatever behind. I actually have a ink change a bit of uh to demonstrate a bit of the writing function. You can actually increment the user data using option six, okay? Ah, so now I run user data six. If I read it again, right? Ah, I have a smiley face. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so I actually, so I'm actually writing and changing the value at the back of the whole user data. Okay, so and then if I, I can write it a few more times. Okay, uh, four. Okay, and then the smiley face just turned black. Okay, I can change, I can change the read head. I can write it again. Yeah. Oh no, why is it not detecting? Ah, can't go. Oh, you, oh, you, busy reading. Oh, you, cannot read it. Oh, you, let me try another one. Oh, you, hang. Oh, you, let me pause the video. Ah, okay, uh, never mind. Slight bug. Uh. Run into a slight bug. Okay, it will be fixed afterwards. But that's the gist about it. If you just change the, you can still change the antenna. Just read the antenna and then after that, run command 4 to read it first before you uh, run the increment. So if I change the antenna, and then, yeah. Then you can read it again and you can see, yeah the different symbols all the time. You can see that the count is actually increasing. Okay. So yeah, that's a short demo. Yeah, and then if uh, anything go wrong, you need to reset. You need to use the reset command. You can use option 9. And then you reset until it goes back to idle. Okay. And exit the program is 0. And that's about all. Thank you for the demo.